Welcome to another edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. This is a unique podcast that uh, that comes out most every week uh, uh, as part of uh, you know the Monday through Friday show. Bubba and I have been hosting for 30 years, and you can find out everything you want to know about that by going to rickandbubba.com if this is your first introduction uh, to the two of us uh, in the podcast format. Bubba, today, um, yeah, I'd like to say that we planned all this out and we were very strategic. But Sounds like we're very timely, doesn't it? It does. Yep. E- Eli Gold mm-hmm. has, uh, has been an acquaintance of ours for a, a number of years, and, and he has a, an incredible career that, that spans over many sports. Uh, but in our home state of Alabama, um, the University of Alabama Crimson Tide, he has been the voice of the Tide uh, for many, many years. All I mean, he, he, he spanned the entire career of... Nick Saban, uh, we had him scheduled just to talk about his life, and and because it's fascinating enough. Uh, but 24 hours before we started recording this, uh, Nick Saban, many believe is the greatest college football coach to ever coach, decided to announce his retirement. Uh, so Eli Gold has been been in high demand, uh, even more than normal because of that announcement. Eli, welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. How are you? I am well, gentlemen. Thank you. It's good to be with us and uh, with you. And and I do need to offer you condolences on the loss that you recently suffered with your dad, uh, a, a great, great man. And I uh, just wanted to make sure I was uh, not too deep into the show before I mentioned that. Well, kind of you to say that. As you know, being around sports for so long, uh, there's there's guys that are that are unique and one of a kind. Uh, yep. dad, dad was certainly one of those, and he always thought very highly of you. And frankly, uh, that's quite a compliment when it comes to media people. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, I hear you. Yeah. So you also have spent 17 seasons with a very unique individual, that that being Nick Saban. Um, we, we would be remiss if we didn't jump into that because it's, it's such at the forefront of everybody – uh, their thoughts right now. Uh, Eli, I know you w- don't want to disclose anything that might have been confidential, but were you surprised by this, and do you think the university was surprised? Well, I can't speak for the university. I don't know, but I was surprised. I mean, we all knew, we all knew, you know, that we were closer to the finish of his career than we were to the beginning. He wasn't going to go another 17 years, but uh, I didn't expect it uh, to happen yesterday as it did. Uh, my wife came running into the, I was in the bedroom doing something and she came running in and said, Hey, Nick Saban retired, come turn the TV on. And uh, that's how I learned. Uh, that's how I learned. But I'll tell you something as, as sad as I am personally and, and selfishly, I'm thrilled for him and for Miss Terry and for the kids and for the grandchildren. Uh, I am, I'm just thrilled for all of them that they'll be able to spend time with the coach now. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm saddened that I won't be working with him any longer. But, uh, you know, such is life. Huh? You, you know, he, he was so dedicated to the calls and so focused on it, it's almost hard to imagine him outside of coaching. I mean, you, you mentioned a lot of things that he obviously can take his time up with and will enjoy, but it's just hard to imagine him not going in there preparing for that next week or that next recruiting class. Well, you know, nothing says, however, that he won't be a member of a team. And I use that as a team of broadcasters. Should he choose to go to work for a sports network? Uh, he he could end up being a member of a team of administrators. Mm-hmm. You know, if somebody decides to create a the job of commissioner of college football, uh, he'd be wonderful for that. Um, there are a lot of positions out there in which he can get that fill of the need to be part of a team because he's been part of a team since he was a you know single digit youngster playing you know, ball on the streets of West Virginia. So, um, you know, he'll find something to do, but I dare say he's also going to enjoy a little downtime with the family, with Miss Terry, uh, and, 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 and have a good time doing that. Yeah. You know, we always, all of us think to ourselves, uh, anytime we got to talk to him and you got to talk to him a lot more than we did, you know, where you would look for little hints of where he was. And I remember one day it was in the last, you know, three or four years, 
uh, we were out at uh, the golf course Greystone for the Celebrity Pro-Am or whatever, and Bubba was playing, so he'd left the show early, and he and Speedy had gone out, and I, I was kind of left there with him with some of the other guys f- for the interview. And sure. I, and I told him, I said, on this day, because I know that you think all of us in the media, no matter what, what, what our resume <laughs> may be, that we have no idea what we're talking about when we talk about football. So I'm not going to ask you about football. I want to get to know Nick Saban. And I said, so tell me what you do outside of football that you enjoy. And he really lightened up, put a smile on his face. You know, he had that grimace because he thought I was going to ask him something stupid. And <laughs> yeah. and because we often had. And and so he, he just kind of seemed to calm down and say, yeah. I love to go to the lake. Uh, Miss Terry likes the lake. I like to go to the lake. That's what I usually do in my off time, and I actually do enjoy doing things away from football, which I think because of Bubba's point that he's so committed and such a taskmaster that you almost thought that he didn't have life outside of football. And I remember my own father that you mentioned saying he thought the key to not burning out was to have a life outside of football. That can't, sure. be, that can't be all you ever do. So, sure. I, so I, I think he's – you say – you and I, I only had that one encounter where I kind of got a glimpse at it – that he isn't a a guy that can't survive outside of being on the field. Oh, he'll be able to survive just fine, but he's got to be busy. I think he's going to be the kind of guy who has to have some place to go or something to do when he wakes up in the morning. Uh, I do believe that. But uh, what that is, I don't know. You know, he may just take a year and do nothing here for a while. I don't know. I have no idea whatsoever. But, uh, you know, he's a good man. You know, he loves the the music of the Eagles. He loves this. He loves that. Uh, I remember once I ran into the uh, PR man for the Eagles, and I knew the Nick, that Nick Saban was a, a big fan, and I ran into this guy. It was while I was still working for NASCAR many years ago, and uh, <clears throat> he, we started talking, and he said, do you deal with Nick Saban? I said, yes, sir, I do. How you doing? Tell me. But what He said, I've got something for him. Can I send it to you? And then you deliver it to the coach. I said, sure. So I don't know, two, three weeks later, here came this huge carton delivered to my house by the guy at, at UPS or FedEx. And I opened it up. Uh, and it was because it, it wasn't addressed to Coach Saban. It was addressed to me. I opened it up. And it was every album and every periodical, every magazine that ever featured the Eagles. I mean, it was just wow. this amazing thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I threw it in the back of the car and I carried it down to Tuscaloosa the next weekend and walked into his office as we were getting ready to record the pregame show. And I said, uh, be careful of, of, I forget how I phrase it. Be careful of men carrying, bearing gifts or something like that. (laughs) And uh, he was like a kid in the toy store getting ready for Christmas. He stood there, he opened that, and they had autographed all the album covers and the CD covers and all of the stuff. It was just amazing. And he is genuinely a nice guy. He is a, a wonderful man. He does have a good sense of humor. Uh, now, it's 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 kind of dry. He's not going to be appearing at the Chuckle Hut uh, every <laughs> week. No. But, but it, it, is, it is a dry sense of humor, and he's just a wonderful, wonderful man. He really is. You know, it's so weird, and Bubba and I were looking at each other. I kid you not, I'm not making this up. That was my dad's favorite group as well, and – one of the things that he hung on to, even in the late stages of Alzheimer's, is he could still sing every word to take it easy and all these Eagles songs. And they were by far his favorite band. And he thought if you Isn't did, that something? I thought that was odd. And he said, and if you don't like them, he thought you were stupid. So, I mean, he, he, he would go that far. Um, so we, I want to come back. we got a lot more to, to jump into. Eli, we've got to ask you, yeah. because we'll be beat up by the people yeah, listening that was to this. Be if we question. don't at least ask you your thoughts on the next coach, who it might be, who yeah. you'd like to see it be. And we'll we'll, we'll take a break and come back and let you think yeah, about that. Yeah, and we'll think on that. we got okay. more, to, more to talk about with Eli Goat. Obviously, this is the biggest sports story going on right now, and Eli has a unique perspective on this. But we have other things we will talk about. When Rick and Bubba University, the podcast continues. 
This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Bubba, we talked about it on the big show, but we, we got to discuss, you know, when we have this border situation going on where people are flooding into our country unvetted, it has a lot of people, uh, you know, with angst. They're like, you know, we don't know who's coming in. It seems logical to be able to vet people out. We don't want to deny people access to a better life, but vetting people out to make sure they're not dangerous uh, doesn't seem unreasonable. A little tough to do with it being two million people. Right. So then you start thinking to yourself, why would a current government not agree with that logic? Right. Well, you, you know Glenn Beck, he's all over this. <laughs> uh, have you seen this new series he's got oh, called I Colony know. Ridge? I know. It's very, very interesting. Colony Ridge is a strange setup. I mean, we're talking about in Liberty County, Texas, right near the border, Colony Ridge is growing fast. As a matter of fact, this community is growing extremely fast at a rate of 200 lots a week. Uh, and Glenn and, and the Blaze Originals team have, have seen it firsthand. The overwhelming percentage of the residents are Spanish-speaking non-citizens. So now Glenn spoke personally with John Harris. He, he's a developer. And he stated that uh, he thought around 35,000 people live there, but the local officials have contradicted this man, saying it, it is it is more than twice what he's telling you. And uh, and if you haven't checked this out, there's hundreds of thousands of people living uh, in, college, uh, in Colony Ridge or should be in the next few years. So why? Uh, uh, Bubba, you've, you've theorized about this. Glenn's saying the same thing. Could it be the Democrats trying to turn Texas blue? Uh, that's one of the the things. At would least you, purple. Would you like to see more about it? Well, if you're not a subscriber to Blaze TV, you can't see it. So why don't you subscribe now to Blaze TV? There's all kinds of other content there, including uh, an hour of our show every day. Get $30 off an annual subscription by visiting blazeoriginals.com and just use the code Colony Ridge. Get updated on this. It's important. Uh, blazeoriginals.com. Use the code Colony Ridge. 30% off your annual subscription to Blaze TV. Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, Eli Gold uh, is our guest. Eli uh, has been in sports for many, many years, uh, uh, born in Brooklyn, New York, uh, back in 1953, called uh, uh, New York is home to his 23 years old. And we've talked to Eli before about his story, how he ended up coming <laughs> to the Deep South and being this prominent voice in, in multiple sports, uh, football, hockey, NASCAR, to name a few. Uh, but right now we're talking about the fact that 17 seasons, uh, he's been the, the play-by-play man uh, for the tenure of uh, Nick Saban at the University of Alabama. Nick Saban has just uh, recently announced uh, his retirement. So, Eli, going into that break, we asked you about who might be the next coach, and you were saying you really don't know. That's correct. I have no idea. Uh, you know, Greg Byrne will be able to make a very good selection. With or without the input of Coach Saban, although I'm sure he'll take Coach Saban's input, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, input. But uh, no, I have no say so. I have no idea. Uh, I'm not going to pick up the phone and call and ask uh, our athletic director. All right, psst, psst, you can tell me. Uh, I don't do that. I don't do that. So uh, I have no idea. But whoever it's going to be needs to have thick skin and needs to be accomplished because he is filling in not only not, not only is he stepping into a a huge job forgetting who the predecessor was right he's set, stepping into a, a huge job in the sec but he's following the greatest coach of all time so will you say that unapologetically do you think he is uh he's exceeded uh even what paul bear bryant accomplished i know it's so hard to, yeah, it's, to, it's difficult. To, to you know, compare. The, different the rules. Answer, yeah. Yeah. The answer to that is generational. If you ask people who are in their 80s and 90s, they will probably still tell you that Coach Bryant was the best there was. Talk to people up to their 70s, and they'll probably say Nick Saban is the best that we've ever seen. You know, it's, it's up to people, but, uh, I personally, because I have been there, I didn't work with Coach Bryant. Uh, I came in as he was stepping down and, and eventually, you know, shortly thereafter passed away. Um, I, I just, uh, I, I, I've never seen anybody work the way Nick Saban has. 
And now I've worked with, I started with Bill Curry and, you know, then everybody thereafter, uh, Gene Stallings uh, and everybody, uh, good, bad or indifferent. But I have never seen anybody work with the degree of meticulous preparation that Nick Saban has. Uh, he tries to be a perfectionist and he knows that we're all human and nobody is perfect but he tries his darndest and only because he wants the university to succeed he wants the players to succeed and for those players who aren't going to the national football league even though there are more nfl players from alabama than from any other school there's still hundreds who haven't had a sniff of the nfl and and he wants them to do well as well so let, can we can we talk a minute, Eli, just about and and you you share what you want to share. Those of us in Alabama want to know how you're doing. Uh, you know, we we know that you've had some health problems, uh, especially it affected this season. Um, how are you doing? We I, people yeah, ask check me, us I, up. Yeah, people ask me all the time, and I I'm say, doing I, yeah. okay, I'm good. doing perfectly. I'm doing perfectly. Yeah. Uh, thank the good Lord. Uh, I have no sign of cancer any longer. Yeah. Uh, Every, every test, and I was just in for regularly scheduled tests uh, a couple of weeks ago. All my blood work, all of everything has been just perfect. I responded to the chemotherapy. I mean, I was a sick boy. You're right. I was, yeah. I was very, very sick. Uh, you know, there were a few nights where they told my family, look, you don't want to wander too far from the hospital because he might, may not make it through the night. Mm. I, was, I was very sick. But uh, now I have not a single shred of cancer left in me, and I feel well. I'm getting stronger and stronger by the day. And, uh, you know, I, the, the best medicine I've had has been getting back into the broadcast. Yes, booth. I bet. You, you know, you can understand that. That's where we're most at home. Oh, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, with the help of my wife and daughter, who have been magnificent caregivers, uh, for me, plus the doctors at all the hospitals and a nursing home that I had to stay in for a while to learn how to 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 learn how to walk again. I mean, I I was I was in bad shape, but now I'm fine, and I I I can't thank the Lord enough. Amen. Well, being a lot of a, people praying for you. Yeah, and being a cancer yeah. survivor myself in in remission right now, we're we're just so so happy to hear that. Yeah. That's well, great news. You. You've got mail. Uh, see, there are people already yeah, emailing you. Somebody's excited uh, there. So, yeah. uh, and, and and don't let us belabor this, but you know we're all looking for things with this thing with Saban, and you talked about his work ethic, which I, I totally agree with you on that. He, the thing I always loved about his message was, if you just do these things, wins will be the result. We're not doing this looking for a win. If we do these things, we'll produce wins. But did you see anything this season uh, or the last? couple of seasons that made you think i think he's getting close uh or, or did this completely you surprise know, you you know i i heard a i heard a sound bite maybe you saw it it was from the sec championship game uh and uh it was he and kirby at midfield before the game as coaches will always you know schmooze and he leaned over at one point to Kirby and the mic picked him up and he said, man, I'm getting too old for this. Right. And Kirby said, no, you're not. He goes, you're a young guy, yada, 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 yada. I had never really heard the coach address uh, anything age wise uh, until, and I just made note of that, you know, uh, but no, I don't know. It's, I, I, he's, he's, he's done so much. And I'm not, I don't know to what degree, but I think the changing landscape of college football yeah, yeah. with the NIL and, and with the, the transfer portal, that probably, you know, the, he loves the fact that the players are getting paid. Uh, he's totally in support of that. But the way it's working and the way the portal works, I don't know if that might not have hastened his, uh, his departure just a bit. So uh, I don't know. It's just been a tough, it, it, I, I just hate it. Selfishly, I hate it. 
Yeah, we had kind of speculated that might have been part of it, too. Uh, let's talk about that just a little bit, because I know the NCAA has been meeting and, and going over some rules and some modifications to this. Uh, it seems like it's a little out of control, Eli. Where, where is this going to go? How's this going to play out long term? I don't know. It'll be free. It'll be uh, free agency. It already is that now uh, to this point. Uh, I don't know if they're ever going to do anything to put a halt to it. You know, Nick Saban always used to tell them, he said, be careful what you ask for because you may get it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in Alabama, of course, has always benefited from the transfer portal. Yes, we've lost players, losing some this year, but, you know, when when you get a good player, he wants to play at a good program where he can get a national championship ring. And all of a sudden, you know, the schools like the Alabamas and the Michigans and all of those, you know, that's where these players go to. So the Tide benefited uh, from the, the transfer portal, but it also is a difficult, it, it changes the scope of everything and all the work you've done for recruiting. Uh, you have to change things uh, when guys decide to leave and go elsewhere and all of a sudden you're down a couple of linebackers or whatever it is. You know, it's it. I, I don't know how much that played into the coach's decision. I, it, I've never asked him. Um, but, you know, for a man who has been set in his ways, although he is very quick to, you know, he's, he's quick to adapt. Uh you know, he's not afraid to change his offense around. He's not afraid to change how he recruits. But I don't know how much this whole thing has uh, has rubbed him the wrong way or not. I don't know. But, uh, you know, whatever it is, if he had chosen to stick around as he did this year, I still maintain, I told him this during one of our call-in shows, I said, Coach, this might have been, in my estimation, might have been your best coaching performance yeah. ever yeah. and he was quick to deflect the attention he said well i've got a great coaching staff and this and that and he does no question about it but uh, you know he i think this year taking the team from where they were in week one week two the south florida game in week three and taking them to the national championship tournament uh without a doubt to me the, the best coaching performance he's had, even better than teams that were laden with talent and went undefeated. Uh, this year's team was very talented, but maybe not the most talented that he's had. And, uh, and he still got the most out of them. I agree with you 100%. We yep. actually said so on the show. I, I told the Alabama fans, I said, y'all need to realize right now, this staff you have and Saban, they're coaching their butts off right now. And yeah. where, where this team was and where they got them was, I agree with you, I think it was the best coaching job that he did himself and, and with the ensemble that he put together as assistant coaches too. So we'll come back. We'll continue our conversation with Eli Gold on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, so you may be listening to this podcast right now on Raycon Everyday Earbuds, and if you are, congratulations. Yes. Uh, but, I know it sounds good. Right. Now, some of you may be going, I I'm not, and, and I feel like I'm not in the loop, and, and you'd be right. Uh, here's the bottom line. Some, sometimes, well, you and I, Bub, over our years have got to present many messages. Yep. This one may be as simple as it gets because it's premium audio at about half the price of the other premium audio brands, and then we're going to get you additional savings. So this is real simple. Why would I pay more for something that costs less that is as good and better <laughs> in some cases? So so why don't you do that? They, I, I love the way they worked them. Because in the beginning, I think the, the earbud people, they were just like, people just want earbuds. We don't care how ridiculous they look or how they feel in their ears. Well, well, Raycon said, no, I think people want to be comfortable and they'd like for them to be discreet. So they, they designed them that way. They've got the gel tips that will, will customize so that they fit the, the, the shape of your ear canal so you're comfortable. Eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of, of battery life, sound profiles. But again, about half the price of other premium audio brands. And now if you go to buyraycon.com slash Rick Bubba Pod, you get an additional... 
15% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash rickbubbapod to score 15% off and free shipping. Eli Gold is our guest on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, obviously uh, his connection to Alabama football and the retirement of Nick Saban, a huge, huge story today. Uh, Eli, you touched on it a minute ago. Now Alabama transitions, and over your time at Alabama, you've seen many transitions. Nick Saban, by far the most successful. Um, you know, it's um, – we, and I think I, I think about people like Mike Price. I'll never forget that, and I can't imagine what it was like to be in your position. You could tell pretty quick that my, though Mike Price was a good football coach, he had no idea about the culture of the SEC and namely being the head coach at the University of Alabama. So you can be a good football coach, but but there's there's got to be more. And Saban masterfully seemed to navigate that role. Now his winning made that role simpler. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Yeah, but but it it it's a unique thing to be the head football coach at the University of Alabama. But he also was so successful that he had the confidence to make changes yes. when necessary. When it got to the point we remember Terrence Cody, the big yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. lineman. Uh, you know, you'd have to take him out on third down and fourth down because he wasn't gonna, he wasn't mobile enough and quick enough and agile enough to play third and fourth downs. Well, when it got to the point where you didn't have time to substitute and you had to use the guy on third and fourth down who was in there on first and second, well, the coach started changing. He yeah. looked at things differently when he had to change offenses. You know, he did that. The Blake Sims offense, different than the Jake Coker offense, different from AJ, different from this one, different from that one. He had the confidence, let alone the ability, but he had the confidence to change things so that he didn't force feed his style to a team that couldn't execute right. what he wanted. He changed it to better fit the players that he had. Uh, the same thing with, with, with Tua, the same thing with everything that he does. When he brought in Lane Kiffin, how many coaches would have done that? Uh, you know, he did it because he was confident enough in his ability to make the changes that needed to be made. And that's the thing that separated him from all the others. Uh, a lot of guys can coach football. He was sharp. You know, he knows his X's and O's. A lot of guys know their X's and O's, but it's that other stuff that really separated him from everybody else. You, you know, I thought that was one of the, the attributes that he mastered the best because we here in business, we've certainly heard it in sports before, dance with the one that brung you. You know, you get locked into a way of doing things. You don't think outside that box, but I know when the hurry up, no huddle came along, Coach Saban initially didn't like it, then became a master of it. Uh, you know, he, he moved from running a lot of between the tackles to a more balanced offense when he had the opportunity to do that. And, and not everybody makes that adjustment. I think that was one of his, his greatest moves was his you gotta ability have the guts to, to do that. Yep, though, too. Yep. You got to have the guts, Yeah, let, let alone the ability, but he had the guts to do it. But why? because he had already won some national championships. He had had so many victories. You know, who was going to second guess him? <laughs> who was right. going to give him grief? Nobody, because they all trusted what Nick Saban could do because of what he already had done. Well, I hope that the fan base understands all that you guys are talking about and I'm agreeing with. I hope you're hearing us saying that people like this don't come along mm -hmm. Very often, very true. and very true. yeah, and you you made that point because there's some people that might have the 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 logic to go. I need to change my offense, but they don't have the ability to do it, or they have the ability to do it. But back to what you said, Eli, I don't have the guts to do it. He had both, not only the guts, but the ability to do it. And well, we could, we could name a lot of guys. Yeah, we could name a lot of guys, and I'm not going to here. Right, but there are a lot of guys who are in the Southeastern Conference who are no longer in the Southeastern Conference because they refused 
to make those changes. I don't know anybody, Rick, that would have changed their quarterback in the national championship oh game. Now, granted, oh and, and you went from a guy who is going to be a future NFL star to another guy who's going to be a great NFL performer, but very few people would have done that. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I know. I, couldn't, I, I, mean, I, I couldn't remember watching it. the game, and I'm like, this guy – Back to guts. I think I yeah. used a different term, but yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I was like, <laughs> I was like, did he really just do that and win the game? Uh, I remember talking at halftime of that game. My color man was Phil Savage, and it was halftime, and obviously Bama had not played well in the first half. And uh, I said, "Do you?" Th- I said to Phil, "I said, do you think he's going to have the?" Yeah, right. Not guts, but do you think he's going to have the guts to? bring in Tua. I said, I don't, I said, I don't believe he will. I said, I just can't imagine that. And, and Phil Savage said, he's going to bring in whomever he feels is going to give him the best chance at winning. Yep. And out of the locker room, here comes the team with, with Tua leading the way. So uh, yeah, it was, that was quite the night. It really was. Well, and and what Bama does next, I mean, I know you don't know, but it doesn't keep all of us in in, in talk radio from talking about it because we enjoy the actual discussion. Uh, you know, it gets down to, and we've seen this in the past when Paul Bear Bryant uh, left this world, and there was a massive shadow behind. It took us a while to get to Nick Saban. I can't imagine. Do you think there are something that, of course, the money's so big and that you can do so many things now, but um, there's good and bad to the transfer portal. You can build a team, but you also can lose a yeah. team. Uh, but, but you, I mean, do, does anybody want to be this next guy? I mean, sure, you, sure. You, yeah. Oh, no question about it. Uh, there's no question about it. You know, back in those days, the criteria were different. Alabama was looking for somebody who had Alabama pedigree. Yeah. You know, that you know, they went to Ray Perkins, outstanding receiver and so on. There were a lot of things that came into play in securing a head, a head coach in those days that don't come into play today. And then, even if you did want to you know, keep it with an Alabama pedigree. Well, <clears throat> some of the greatest coaches out there now, assistants and head coaches, have some degree of Alabama pedigree. You know, I mean, now, for instance, he's not going to hire Kirby Smart, okay? So understand, I'm not saying Kirby Smart's coming to Alabama. <laughs> but if he did, well, he used to coach at right. Alabama. Right. There's a connection there. Right. You know, there's all sorts of there's no way you can go where there isn't a connection to Alabama. But you know, you have to have the right person, but there'll always be somebody for the job. I'll tell you guys, and I don't want to make this about me, but it's I gotta use this as an example. Two of my jobs I followed Hall of Fame announcers right in the national hockey league with the st louis blues i was a kid living in birmingham alabama and i followed dan kelly who was arguably the greatest hockey announcer of his time and when i was at alabama you know john forney yeah beloved had been here for 30 years and i followed john forney and, you know, did you want to be the guy who followed him? No. Did you want to be the guy who followed Dan Kelly? No. But I wasn't going to turn down the NHL, and I wasn't going to turn down the University <laughs> of Alabama. You're right. You got to do it. You got to be confident in your ability. You got to have thick skin. You got to, you know, close your ears sometimes so as to not hear all the stuff. And this was in the day when we didn't have, uh, you know, social media, no you know, no Facebook, no no Twitter or X, whatever they call it now. <laughs> this week. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's it's just there's always going to be somebody who wants to take it, the opportunity, and this is one of the ob- absolute greatest opportunities at a school which loves football, which has the best facilities 
you can imagine. I mean, look, why do all these guys from the NFL come back to Tuscaloosa during the summer and work out here? Because our facilities are better than those in the National Football League. Uh, nobody's going to turn that down as a coach if you're offered the position. We'll come back. We'll finish our conversation with Eli Gold when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, continues. Well, we all know how it feels. You you need service, and you go, well, I'd rather not, if I have a choice, spend my money with companies that represent things and publicly say things and support things that I don't agree with. But sometimes you don't have a choice. But when it comes to your wireless provider, did you know what? You may not have known this. You have a choice. It's called Patriot Mobile. It's been America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. And, and look, trust me. Uh, th this, there's not others out there. You may try to find them, but they're not there. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide uh, coverage, giving you the ability to access all three major networks. So you're not going to be losing uh, any coverage, which means you know the coverage you've been accustomed to is there. But now you're not funding maybe companies that represent things you don't agree with. Uh, so when you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending the message that you support free speech, religious freedom, the sanctity of life, Second Amendment, military veterans, uh, first responders. Um, they're a 100% U.S.-based customer service team. You love that. And that makes switching easy. You can keep your number you have now if you want to. You can keep your phone you have now if you want to. Or you can upgrade. They'll help you find the best plan that meets your needs. So why don't you go right now to patriotmobile.com slash rickbubba. That's patriotmobile.com slash rickbubba. Get free activation when you use our code Rick Bubba, or when you call them 972 Patriot, use the code Rick Bubba as well. Why don't you join lots of folks out there and make that switch today? Eli Gold is our guest. Uh, it is Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Nick Saban uh, has announced his retirement. Uh, and then also today, can you believe this, Eli? Uh, Belichick is out. Uh, Pete Carroll is out. Uh, I yeah. mean, it, there, was, there was a rumor James Spann was retiring. Right. I mean, it James looked like the, and all the dominoes were falling. Had huh? to step yeah. in. Uh, Eli, are you going to announce anything? <laughs> Tell us. I, I mean, what's going on with you? No, no mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here for as long as the university will have me. Yeah, we, we say that all the time. People ask us, I say, as long as I can mentally and physically do it and somebody will let me do it, I'm in. It's yeah, what I, I've been wanting to do yeah, this since I'm I was a little boy. Embarrass, I'm not going to embarrass myself nor will I embarrass the university by going on the air, not able to perform as I have over these years. But thankfully, uh, you know, as I, I'm, I'm, I'm not in great shape, but, uh, you know, round is a shape, actually. <laughs> but you're but, in good uh, shape for the shape you're in, in good, Eli. Yeah, I'm in good shape for the shape I'm in. <laughs> and actually, I, my, my, I've been blessed after all the illness, so... No, I'm I'm ready to hang around as long as they'll have me. Yeah, I keep telling everybody, Rick, I'm going to go 15 more years. That's what my banker said. That's funny. Yep. Uh, Wait, what's, the, what's the other one? My banker says I can I can work, I can retire now and live comfortably until next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah. Eli, I've got I've got to ask you this. I, I know we're running out of time, and we had so many things we wanted to cover uh, before the Nick Saban story broke. But you have done so many sports at so many different levels. I, I, I know it's unfair to ask you if you have a favorite outside of the University of Alabama. We're going we're gonna to set that one aside. Of all the okay. other things you have done, what are, is one of the things you enjoyed the most? I'm not going to say favorite, but enjoyed the most. Well, hockey was what I did first growing up. And... Then, as people know, I used to sell I used to sell peanuts at Madison Square Garden. Uh, when I couldn't afford to get in, I used to go and watch the games from the upper deck while while selling peanuts. And so hockey has always been special to me. And then going back to the garden as the voice of the St. Louis Blues and later on the voice of the Nashville Predators uh, of the NHL, uh, and doing broadcasts at Madison Square Garden, that was very, very special to me. Uh, doing my first Daytona 500, that reaffirmed to me that, you know, the people who knew racing felt I had a, a future and there was a reason to be there. So there are a lot of dates and events that, that come to mind. Some are not that pleasant. Uh, I was the guy on the air 
when Dale Earnhardt passed away. Mm. And, and every time you hear that cut, that's my voice uh, accompanying it. Um, it's, you know, it's just been, I've, I've been involved in so much positively and regretfully the negatives as well. But I've been blessed, man. I have been blessed beyond belief. I, I noticed you didn't include morning radio because that, 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 that <laughs> oh. you know, that getting up thing is, is pretty rough. You know, I, it's, uh, it, it kind of puts yeah. a damper on the rest of the day, doesn't it? But, you know, I had to do it and it was part of the development and I worked with the uh, great uh, TC and John Ed oh, yeah. uh, from years gone by, Tommy Charles and John Ed Willoughby. But yeah, morning radio was okay. I did enjoy sports talk at at its outset because my show was the only one yeah. in the state of Alabama in those days. Nobody else had sports talk. I had the only show. So that was great. If I wanted to talk about baseball in the middle of iron bowl week uh oh i was able to do i did that i mean i remember yeah. we had there was a, a i think it was the touchdown club or the quarterback club whomever uh you know they wanted i had my show there but in town that week for some function were sparky anderson and tommy lasorda two great baseball oh, managers yeah. so i brought them to the touchdown club. And I did my show in the lobby of the Hilton there. And, uh, you know, today you probably couldn't get away with that because people would, would shoot you after, <laughs> what are you not talking about the I, iron bowl? Right. Who cares? Yeah. Baseball. Well, in those days I didn't have to, I didn't have to worry about the people changing the channels because there was no other sports talk show. Right. You was and the only it, game in town. Yeah. So, uh, so, no, t times have changed, but I enjoyed that. Uh, then I got away from sports talk. It kind of got to be a little bit uh, too squirrely oh, yeah. for me. But uh, but I'm a play-by-play -play guy. That's what I do most. That's what I think I do best. Uh, I'm, I'm a professional describer, and uh, that's that's how I like to do it. Well, you're one of the best, and and you you always um, it's I've watched you in action. I've had the pleasure of, of being there as you were doing it, and I'm just uh, you know it, you were born to do it. And didn't it, you all call a junior high game you, together? Eli, I, I'm, I'm a little jealous. Well, Eli never got to sit in with you. Let me tell you, it was huh? so it was so odd yeah. because I thought, what is Eli Gold doing at Pazitz <laughs> Middle School? <laughs> And my son was playing on the seventh grade team, and then he realized he said, "I'm here for the same reason you're here. My daughter goes here." <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, our kids called one in for the dads, and we it was a it was fun. We got to do a junior high football game on a, yeah. on a tape recorder yeah. for the kids to listen to. Exactly, it was a lot of fun. I'll do that. I did a I did a soccer game, a soccer match at Mountain Brook a couple three years ago. You know, if people are kind enough to ask me, and if my schedule accommodates it. I'll be glad to do it. You know, you got to give back to the community. And uh, if, they, if they're if they kind enough to ask, uh, as long as I'm available, uh, I'll, I'll do it. i tell you a funny line you had that night, Eli. I know you don't remember this. And it's going to be terribly local. So I, pardon us if you don't understand some of the local humor. <laughs> but you all have this wherever you live. There's the very old money affluent community. Then there's some of the new money community. And Eli and I were, our kids went to the new money community and, and we were sitting there and we had, literally had a tape recorder and a microphone and they were going to let the kids hear it after it had been recorded. And the, and the players all got a copy of it for it to be special to them that Eli, you know, did a game for them. And my son still, I'm sure has that. But anyway, he looked at me and we were playing Mountain Brook and Mountain Brook was setting up a complete TV yeah. set up for their <laughs> local TV station. And Eli looks at him, he goes, if you want to say the difference between old money and new money. Uh, <laughs> There it is, yeah, next exactly. door. <laughs> exactly, and you can't hide money. <laughs> you and I have the tape recorder. They've got a complete TV set up. Well, Eli, you, you've done so much for so long, and you've done it so well. We hope that you will continue to do that. We wish you nothing but great health. And uh, the, the broadcast that you're on will not be the same without you, so we hope that you will continue yes. to do it for a long, long time. Like I said, as long as the university will have me, I'll be there forever. 
Well, we would hate for any new coach to miss the thrill of hearing Eli Gold say touchdown Alabama. <laughs> that's I mean, right. That, that, that's one of the perks that comes with it. So, I hear uh, you. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. Well, thank you, Eli. Also, uh, you know, he wrote some books over the years, uh, Crimson Tide, The Shaping of the South's Most Dominant Football Team, Bears Boys, and he just mentioned his story from Peanuts to the Press Box. Uh, there's also some books by Eli Gold if you want to try to find those. Eli, thanks for being with us today. And, Hope you'll come on again sometime. Yeah, and, uh, Just invite me anytime. I'll be glad to do it. Be careful because we're the kind of people that uh, that actually will. Yeah. So, uh, so just know that. <laughs> we'll Sounds call. good. Thank you, Eli Gold. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> and uh, and thanks to all of you the, for taking time uh, to just check out uh, old Rick and Bubba as we continue to you know just forge ahead, Bubba, on uh, this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast.